save your money, this is a complete and utter waste of paper. If this was a diary written at the time, I'd understand, but it's not. It's a memoir, and how useful is a memoir? Let's put it this way. Do you remember your last birthday? What did you have for breakfast on that birthday? Okay, and apart from happy birthday, what did your friends say to you? And how about the year before that? Do you remember what your mum said to you four Christmases ago? Okay, what about two days before Christmas? Do you remember what you watched on TV on the 27th of July 2008? The reality is that human memory is bad at remembering, even on important dates, and because of this, there is absolutely no way that Colonel Adam, 6 Army's adjutant, could possibly remember in detail the events he's describing. Because he's not describing events from a year ago, or the year before that. He's describing events from 20 years prior. He wrote this in 1965, the original German version. Stalingrad was in 1942. But not only does he remember the events in great detail, he also remembers exactly what was said. You know yourself that in most of our divisions, the fighting strength of the regiments has sunk. But that is not the only reason. The ability of the Red Army soldiers to hold on has reached an extent in the last weeks that we had never expected. No soldier or officer speaks today of Ivan in despairing terms, which used to be quite normal. The Red Army soldier is proving himself more from day to day as the master of close quarter fighting, in-house fighting, and in camouflage. Our artillery and air force virtually plough the enemy out of occupied ground before every attack, but as soon as our infantry leave cover, they are hit by destructive defensive fire. Should we be successful in taking a place, the Russians immediately counterattack, throwing us back to the starting point. That was part of Paulus' monologue that goes on for over a page, starting on page 80. And this isn't the only monologue. The entire book is full of passages just like that. And I'm sorry, there's just, there's no way. There's no way that Paulus said these exact words. And I'm, I'll tell you why. The Germans were advancing. They only stopped advancing when the encirclement began. This is someone making it up after the event. The Soviet soldiers weren't just suddenly learning how to fight, which is what's implied. They stopped 6th Army outside the city at Kalach for over a week. Only the intervention of 4th Panzer Army got the offensive going again, and that was before they entered the city of Stalingrad. Yet that's barely mentioned in this book, and it's implied that it was a relatively smooth ride. But that's not what happened. This book is fiction. It is not reliable at all, and it's the same with any memoir that relies on memory, which is the definition of it. Manstein's memoirs, Guderian's memoirs, from the point of view of academic history, they're not reliable. Diaries are better, still biased and whatnot, but at least you know that the memories are fresh. And this isn't based on a diary. Not Colonel Adams anyway, because, well, apart from the fact that the monologues prove that it's completely made up, on the 26th of November, just days after the encirclement, Paulus writes to Manstein on scraps of paper because that's all he's got left. And he actually apologises for this. In the circumstances, I hope you will overlook the inadequacy of the paper and the fact that this letter is in longhand. They're running out of paper, but Colonel Adam was wasting hundreds of pages writing monologues of what Paulus said. No, somehow I don't think so. That I had already ordered the withdrawal of the army behind the Don on the 21st of November, you already know. Then why are you saying it again? Shortly after my flight into the cauldron, I summoned the commanding generals together in a meeting. In full agreement with them, I repeated our conclusions on the 22nd of November and several times in subsequent days to the army high command. The orders for the breakout were to be issued early on the 24th of November, there was nothing else to do, but in a conference with Hitler, Goering said that he was in a position to supply the 6th Army by air. Consequently, the Fuhrer decided to turn down my request. N no, apart from the fact that we've already proven that Goering didn't persuade Hitler, it's quite clear that Colonel Adam is going along with what other generals wrote after the war. And it's, no, it, it's just, it, this book is rubbish. Don't consider buying this book. I would not want anyone to get the wrong idea about what happened at Stalingrad, and this book will lead you to the wrong conclusions. So unless you specifically want Colonel Adams' post-war opinion on what he thinks happened, and a lot of fictional monologues, then, well, you have zero reason to buy this book. Save your money and go buy something else. These videos would not be possible without my patrons, who are helping me gather the books I need for my documentaries, as well as other history-related videos. 
like this one. Your support is vital, so please consider supporting me and make these videos as good as they can be. Thank you to my patrons. As always, you guys are awesome. And thanks for watching, everyone. Bye for now.